We're here in London on the eve of the Paris Climate Talks. While the Paris Talks will be in progress, there will also be the largest fire ever known in human history burning in the forests and the peatlands of Indonesia, largely because of land clearances for palm oil production. The greenhouse gas emissions from the fire in Indonesia is larger than any European country's CO2 emissions. Yet you will hear from companies like Drax and the Department of Energy and Climate Change that burning wood is a renewable source of energy. Study after study is showing that burning wood is every bit as harmful to the environment as burning coal, gas or oil. A few years ago in North Carolina I started to notice that trees were disappearing, patches of trees, small forest, patches of woods, and I myself am the owner of a family farm that's been in my family since the 1700s when North Carolina was first settled by Scottish settlers. Uh, I noticed that all my neighbors were selling their trees and that logging companies were coming and clear cutting the big old oak trees, the ones that are over 150 years old, and there's no replanting going on of any sort. It's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of acres of trees. I started to worry about this and I wanted to know who's buying these trees? I thought the paper pulp industry is dead. Um, there's no one building houses, the building industry is dead, so it's got to be someone else buying these trees. I follow the logging companies to see where they're going, and they're going to a company named Inviva, and what Inviva is doing is taking these big, old, beautiful, irreplaceable trees, grinding them into sawdust, making them into pellets, and shipping them to Britain. Apparently, the demand in Britain is what is driving the loss of supply in North Carolina. The thing I've noticed on my own farm, because I haven't sold my trees, is that I can see animals now. I could never see them before. I see deer, I see raccoons, I see bears, I see squirrels, even a mink, even a beaver. And I shouldn't be able to see these animals. They should be hidden in forest. But now they're crowded closer and closer into the small patch of woods that's left in this area. In some cases, this clear cutting is being done right down to the edges of creeks and to swamps. The root systems and the foliage that absorbs the rain and slows the runoff is being destroyed. So the runoff is going to accelerate into the creeks and into the rivers and hence into the Albemarle Sound or other waters of that area, into the waters that the herring, the shad, the striped bass, the sturgeon, white perch, etc. rely on. Sadly in North Carolina we have almost no best management practices for logging. Things that would say it's not okay to log up to a creek bank. It's not okay to log in standing water. Where we do have some best management practices, there is essentially no enforcement of them. When somebody has their woodlands clear cut to create these wood pellets, there is no requirement that they leave it in forest. They can clear it to make cropland if they wish or anything they want. I'm very fortunate to own the farm that my grandparents Sprules bought in 1914 and where they raised their 11 children. I also am very fortunate to own some of the hardwood forests, both wet forests in the swamps and upland forests, the type that are being clear cut to create these wood pellets. In 2003, a large hurricane came through which just leveled some of my forest. The first generation of things that come back are very, very thick, come up very fast and dominate everything. With their short-lived woody shrubs, head high or so, when they die out, then up comes the next generation of fast-growing things. But the oaks are left behind, the hickories are left behind, the beeches are left behind. I can see that it will be a hundred years or more before that area will ever come back to having those large canopy hardwood trees like oaks and hickories. Drax talk about thinning forests in order to save them. This is patent nonsense and they only argue this because they're receiving huge subsidies to burn wood in the power stations. They are in fact undergoing a program to convert massive coal burning turbines into wood burning turbines. The companies were giving us the happy talk that they were going to use only limbs and treetops. That is absolutely horse feathers. It is not true. There are many, many aerial photographs available for everyone to see 
that they're cutting whole trees, including very old growth trees. And mature trees are so important for everything about biodiversity, and we have got to do something about this unsustainable practice. What used to be an area of beautiful rural natural beauty has now been turned into a wasteland. We really need help. We can ax Drax. We will stop Drax if we stop the subsidies. So please go to our website, Biofield Watch. Look at our alert on writing to your MP to stop this absolutely disgraceful burning of wood by the millions of tons and pumping more greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. Act tracks now. Shout out a call to all your friends now. Because there's justice to be done. And we must count on everyone. It's time to act now. It's time to forge another way where everybody has a say.